thought I would share with you uh, an essay question that I asked my physiology students. It's finals week, <clears throat> uh, and I gave them a little extra credit thing to do. This one's fairly scientific, so um, just kind of bear with me a little bit. Uh, I don't necessarily want to explain it uh, while I'm showing you or going through her answer. But the question that I had for her um, <clears throat> was this, actually for all the students. There are considered six alterations of normal cellular physiology that may lead to malignant cell growth. From what you've learned in this class, discuss those six alterations. How would it be considered, which it now is, that cancer is a metabolic disease? How is the metabolism of normal cells different from the metabolism that occurs in a malignant cell? And how can that knowledge be used to alter the progression of cancer? They had to cite their sources. She had four. <clears throat> the one I was hoping they'd find, she did not find, but she still answered the question pretty well. <clears throat> and then at the end, uh, tell me what you think is the most important thing you've learned for normal physiology in human beings to maintain homeostasis and avoid disease. So this is uh, her answer to that question. The six alterations of normal cellular physiology, also known as the hallmarks of cancer, that may lead to malignant cell growth or self-sufficient growth signals, insensitivity to anti-growth signals, evasion of apoptosis, that's program cell death, endless replicated potential, so they can just continue to grow, sustained angiogenesis, so formation of new blood vessels, and tissue invasion and metastasis. Um, genes express signaling proteins to control signaling pathways. These pathways promote cell growth. Normally, growth factors are made up by one type of cell to act on another type. Tumor suppressors are genes that, when working properly, block the cell cycle progression. Typically, this gives the cell time to activate DNA repair enzymes to fix the cell, or if it is unrepairable, initiate apoptosis. This prevents the formation of cancerous tumors. Normal cells primarily metabolize glucose to pyruvate for growth and survival. The pyruvate will be oxidized to carbon dioxide in the mitochondria and generate 36 ATP, so adenosine triphosphates, per glu glucose. So ATP is the energy generated for cellular metabolism by your mitochondria. mitochondria. In a mutated gene, proteins that halt the cell cycle in response to DNA damage may no longer sense the damage or trigger a response. Mutated cells that evade apoptosis will continue through the cell cycle and pass the mutation on to the daughter cells. Cancer cells can acquire the ability to synthesize and secrete their own growth factors to stimulate more of their kind, which creates a positive feedback loop where more cancer cells divide to make more growth factor. Cancer cells convert most glucose to lactate regardless of the availability of oxygen. This results in diverting glucose metabolites from energy production to anabolic processes at the expense of generating only two ATPs per glucose. This encourages fermentation and more acidity in the microenvironment, which in turn will initiate angiogenesis. With other cells feeding the tumor, the mutated cells can continue to divide unchecked. When a metastatic cell has macrophage properties, it can trick the immune system. This is because macrophages are immunosuppressive and can make the cancerous cell invisible to it. The idea that cancer is a metabolic disease began with the experiments of Otto Warburg in the 1920s. Warburg's hypothesis is that respiratory insufficiency is the origin of cancer, so lack of oxygen. Cancer cell metabolism is different from a normal cell because there is an increase in glucose consumption, more glutaminolysis, glutamine, and fatty acid synthesis. The competition between oxidative phosphorylation using O2 and glycolysis can cause respiratory abnormalities by 
increased glucose availability, increased lactate, and higher mitochondrial calcium. <clears throat> this damages the mitochondrial membranes and slows respiration. By restricting the fuels necessary for cancer growth, glutamine and glucose, one could starve the cancerous cells. Without glucose, the body breaks down fat for energy, which produces ketones. A ketogenic diet restricts glucose availability and reduces inflammation, which induces competition between normal cells and tumor cells for glucose and restricts tumor cell invasion. Since ketone bodies are non-fermentable, they will not replace glucose in cells with defective mitochondria. Without glucose, the cancerous cells will die. Through this course, I've learned the most important aspect of maintaining physiologic homeostasis is diet. A better diet can reduce disease by reducing inflammation. Excess starch-laden carbohydrates and sugars lead to inflammation, weight gain, cardiovascular problems, and even cancer. Because our bodies can use other nutrients like protein or fat to make the glucose needed for our brains, we do not need to consume sugar. Some whole carbohydrates can be beneficial for fiber intake, but with all things, moderation is key. So I thought that was a great answer. She got full credit for that. <clears throat> she cited four references. She actually wrote complete sentences with good grammar. If you want to dive into this uh, with, a, with a pretty easy to read book, get this one. The Cancer Code, Dr. Jason Fung, he's famous for the Obesity Code and the Diabetes Code. This book came out, I think, two years ago, yeah, 2021. And he goes through the history of cancer research and cancer treatment uh, and dives into the metabolic theory of cancer and starving cancer cells using what you eat. So <clears throat> I'm proud of this one. She did a good job. She learned a lot. She was with me in anatomy last semester and physiology this semester, uh, and she is going on to nursing school. So I'll be back later, and I'll talk to you later. See you. Bye.